Hi and welcome to Poly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. So for today's project I thought we'd have a bit of fun and make ourselves some notebooks, sketch pads, artist pads, whatever you want to do with them in polymer clay. So the cover is made completely from polymer clay and inside we've just got lots of paper that we've added in and whatever sort of paper you want to add in depends on what you want them to be. I've done them heart shaped, obviously you can do them whatever shape you like and they're just a bit of fun and they're made completely from polymer clay and then we've added the jump rings as the binders and then added a pattern on the back as well. They can be as simple or as complex as you like, it's completely up to you. This is a slightly longer video where I take you through every step you need from beginning to end to show you how to make your own wonderful notebooks. This is the one I'm doing today, but the pattern's the same. It's just the same elements repeated in slightly different colours. And this design for the Kaleidoscope came as a result of the box challenge that I'm doing. I know a lot of you follow me on social media and thank you very much to those of you who do. I really do appreciate that. Um, and I'm doing a challenge whereby every box of canes I open, I have to make a Kaleidoscope out of them. No matter what's in the box, I'm, the only restriction is it has to be what was in the box when I opened it. And one of the ones I did recently, number 64, which I haven't actually posted yet, but obviously depending when you watch this video, maybe long gone because I've got 150 to do. Number 64 came out like this and I must admit this particular bit I really liked of the pattern that came together and it was a box that didn't have very many canes in it so I've looked at the canes I used to make up that pattern and reproduced them to create the pattern that we're working with today. And as a result of that I have very simply called this cane number 64. We'll start with the equipment then I'll go on to the polymer clay, so if you want to go straight into how we start, then I'll put a note down here of what the time is to go straight through to that. Other than that, sit back, relax and enjoy as I take you through everything you need to know to make these sweet little notebooks. Let's go through the equipment we need for today's workshop. I work on a large tile, so that's always in the background. I use a polymer clay blade and the one I'm using today is a flexible one. Um, because I'm going to use it to curve at some point to cut. If you don't have a flexible polymer clay blade, then a round cutter will work instead. And I sometimes, when I'm working, refer to these as tissue blades. A craft knife. A small roller. This one's about half inch, 1.5 centimetres in diameter. Something like this cable needle. I just use this to smooth over where we join the slices of the cane together. A cocktail stick. We're going to cut out our paper sheets to create our little notebook, so you'll need scissors and you'll need a pencil. When I'm pressing down on things towards the end and using a needle and a drill bit, I have a small board that I work, so I'm not going through as far down as my tile. For today we're doing a heart notebook in the workshop. I don't have a heart cutter that's big enough, so I have made myself a heart template. I have drawn this one out for you and put a copy of it on my website and put the details below the video with how to get to it and find that if you want to use that and when I'm doing that I also have cut out if you like the negative shape on a piece of paper and this allows us to place our heart neatly onto the shape of the veneer so we get the pattern that we want when we're cutting out our heart. You'll need a couple of your heart shapes cut out of card, this is just some A4 card stock and from an A4 sheet you should get five um, cutouts from that. And then you need to decide what sort of paper you're going to use to put inside your notebook. So this is a sketchbook, so I, which is a 10 by 10 inch, so 25 by 25 centimetre, so I've been using that for the ones I'm doing just to make notebooks. But of course if you use something like watercolour paper, you can make a little watercolour sketchbook, and if you used oil paper that's actually been prepared for oil paints you can make it for oils or pastel paper to make it for pastels. If you have none of those and simply want to use A4 paper then that's absolutely fine and you'd be creating a little notebook. So just use whatever you have to hand. For decorating the back I've just used a small heart cutter or you can decorate it in any way that you like. When I'm working I use a measuring sheet this one is freely downloadable from www.printablepaper.net. I have laminated it and I have more than one of these and sometimes I work on this side and sometimes I work on the plain side. This one is four squares to an inch but you can also download it in centimetres if you prefer. 
I use a ruler, although of course you could use the measuring sheet instead, but a ruler is easier for what we're doing. I use some cling film or some plastic wrap to create the binding in the notebook we're doing. I'm using some aluminium jump rings and these are just over a third of an inch or about one centimeter in diameter. Um, they come in nice bright colors. You can buy them online from various stores. They used to do chain mail um, quite a lot for the people who do jewelry bits and pieces, uh, decorative chain mail. And you can get them in all sorts of different colors, um, brights, purples, pinks, reds, greens, but also in silver, gold, black and white as well. So that's what we're going to use to bind our notebook with. And then you need some form of needle or tool that's going to create holes in your paper the same size as you need for the jump ring. So I've just got a needle there that's about, probably about two millimetres in thickness, which will take the jump rings through the holes in the paper. When using the jump rings, I've just got a couple of jewellery pliers that I use just to open them up and then close them again once we've added all the paper inside. And to create the holes in the polymer clay, I put the holes in afterwards so we get them in exactly the right place for the paper. So I've got three drill bits, a one millimetre, a two millimetre and a three millimetre. This one came with a little um, miniature drill bit set, but these ones were simply drill bits that I've inset into scrap polymer clay and they just sit nicely in my hand if I need to drill with the larger pieces that you've got there. I would have to say that's not my idea. I cannot just at the moment remember who did give me the idea for that. Might have been Melanie Muir, might have been Donna Cato. Trying desperately to remember. But whoever first came up with the idea, it's a great way to add drill bits into your repertoire and use up some leftover scraps of polymer clay. To bake our pieces and keep them flat, I lay one on the top side of a tile and then turn the other one upside down and I tend to bake both the front of the notebook cover and the back at the same time so I've got four six inch 15 centimeter tiles which I use for those. Other than that when you're baking the tiles will protect the clay a fair bit if you want to protect it even more you can use some aluminium foil to wrap around the tiles completely in the oven so that should the oven spike at any stage it will help protect the clay during baking. I use biodegradable wet wipes to clean my tools and my hands as I go along and I use a pasta machine dedicated to polymer clay use. If you do not have a pasta machine you can simply stack layers of playing cards on either side of your lump of clay and use a roller over the top and in the details below the video I will put all the different thicknesses that are the equivalent of cards to my pasta machine settings. You'll also need some PVA glue. For finishing techniques you could use varnish. All the brands have their own make of varnish. This is the Fimo one, which is the one that I've used on what we're doing today. You could use Renaissance wax, which gives a nice finish to whatever it is you're doing. Or you could sand and polish. And I'll show you an example of one I've done like that. This is wet, dry sandpaper. And I'll start at 240, go to something like 600, 1000, 1500, and end up at 2000. So just finish it off whichever way you want to do. And of course you don't have to do any of those, you can leave it exactly as it is when it comes out of the oven. If you are using a varnish, then obviously you would need a brush to go with that. Okay, let's move on to the clay we need for today's session. I am using Fimo Soft, but all well-known and recognised brands of polymer clay will work well for this technique. I've got a variety of colours because I'm making four different canes and I'm going to do a blend with these three colours, these three, these three and these three and then this is for the highlights, the background and also the underneath of both front and back covers of our note or sketch pad. All of these amounts, these smaller amounts, are quarter of an ounce or seven grams of clay and we have got white peppermint brilliant blue, white apple emerald green, vanilla lemon yellow flamingo, white raspberry and plum and for the background colour I've chosen Windsor Blue and that's a full two ounce pack and I will actually chop these into pieces so I've got one, two, three, four and when I condition them I will condition a quarter of a pack at once. The first thing I will do is get all of the clay conditioned properly. If you're unsure about conditioning clay or want to know how or why we do it I do have a video tutorial on that and I'll put a link to those details below this video. All of the colours will be 
conditioned in these separate amounts to create small sort of oblong, roughly oblong shapes. And I will condition them on setting three of my pasta machine. And on my machine, naught is thick and nine is thin. So I'll get all of the clay conditioned and bring you back when I have that done. my four colour blends, so they've all been conditioned and put through setting number three of my pasta machine which is a medium setting and I've got them as you can see in just very rough oblong or rectangular shapes and we're going to make a blend between those three colours, those three, those three and those three to give us four blends. If you don't want to do Skinner blends and just have your three colours, then if you take a little bit of that colour and that colour to make a separate one, a little bit of that colour and that colour to make a separate one, and end up with five different colour varieties in each of your four colour matches, then rather than doing a blend, you can simply roll your clay into balls, press them into flat square shapes and stack the squares on top of each other going from the light blend through to the darker and that will give you roughly the same effect and I'll tell you the point at which we get to where you would have done that if you would rather do that rather than doing the Skinner blends. For anyone new to Skinner blends I do have a little video which gives you a few tips and techniques on how to get a good Skinner blend and I'll put a link to that in the details below this one. So for three of these we are going to do the blend in exactly the same way which is going to end up as a concertina where the blend runs from one side through to the other and for one we're going to do the blend in a sort of bullseye cane where there's a light colour in the middle and then it goes round um, and the darker colour goes round the outside. So I'm going to do today these three being the concertina blend and this one being the round blend. So you just need to decide which you're going to do. So I'll start with the blue and we're going to do a concertina with this one and then I'll just simply say, so I've done exactly the same for that blend and that blend and then I'll tell you how we're going to do the more the bullseye or the round one for this blend when we get to that stage. So let's start with the blues. I'm doing a simple Skinner blend so I'm going to cut diagonally down the end two and straight down any in the middle and then because I've got two layers simply stack them on each other and put them across so I've got that nice diagonal line they fit together like that give them a little roll just so they adhere slightly fold in half press the fold to make a point so it goes through the pasta machine more easily and then we're going to put through the pasta machine on one setting thicker because I've now got four layers of clay here and keep folding bottom to top each time you put through fold first so we get a nice blend from the dark blue through to the white and I'll bring you back when we've got that done. And there we have our blend with the graduation through from one colour to the other and it normally takes about sort of 20 about that amount of firm goes through the pasta machine to get a nice smooth blend. So all I'm going to do is going to fold that roughly in half. I could have cut it instead. If you're folding, make sure you've pinched down the fold so there's no air trapped. And then put it back through the pasta machine, your darker end first on the same setting, so setting number two of my pasta machine to get a longer, thinner strip. And now we want to use the pasta machine to get as long and thin a strip as we can. So that means going down to thinner settings. If you know your machine doesn't shred or tear your clay, you can go straight down to your thinnest usable setting straight away. So I will do that and I'll put mine through setting number nine of my pasta machine. If you know you do have a problem though, simply go down one setting at a time until you get to your thinnest usable setting on your pasta machine and always put through dark end first and when you're changing settings from a big setting to a thin setting always turn the handle a couple of times just to release any stuck clay in the machine underneath so you don't get that stuck clay sitting on the end of your polymer clay. So there we go there's our blend and as I mentioned the first three we're going to do as a concertina and you want them roughly the same sort of um, size. So all I'm doing, doesn't matter which end you start from, simply folding it backwards and forwards. Size-wise, it's probably about one and a half centimetres, about half an inch width. And you don't want it too wide because we want to make these into different shapes. Um, so this is about the right width. And as you go, try and make sure you haven't got any air trapped in the folds. Once it's finished, I'll just neaten it up by pressing down on the ends to give myself a nice, neat, 
rectangle of clay we've got the blend from one side going through to the other and as I mentioned I will repeat that now with the purple blends and the orange and yellow blend and I'll bring you back when I've got that done. So there we go all three of those done and we're going to do exactly the same with the green ones until we get to that stage where we've got the longest thinnest strip possible. So first thing cut through as before stack them together and put them through until we've got a nice blend of the colours. Fold and put back through the same setting of the pasta machine. Dark end first and then down to the thinnest setting. And this time we're simply going to roll it from the light end up to the dark. And as before, as you're rolling, making sure that there's no air trapped as you go. So those are our four blends ready to go and the only other thing I've done at this stage is to put one of the blocks of the darker blue which we're going to use as the contrast through on a thin setting of my pasta machine so this has gone through on setting number seven. It's best to think ahead of time which cane you want to put where so if you watch what I'm doing see how they all look when they're finished and then decide what you want to do. Three of them are going to form the main part of the cane, the background pattern of the cane so to speak and then one of them I'm going to use as a cut through and we're going to do a slightly different cut through from the ones I've done in the past and I'll show you that when we get to it. So that one I'm going to put to one side for a second because I'll do him last and I'm going to start by creating the three background canes. Now they're all relatively easy so I'll take you slowly through each one and of course you don't have to use these canes, you can put any combination of cane patterns if you look back through some of my previous YouTube tutorials, a lot of the canes I've done there will work really well for this technique. So I'm going to start off with the purple one. And for this one, all I'm going to do is I'm going to change it into a slightly more triangular shape. And I'm going to do that by creating a point on the white bit and pressing these two corner bits slightly that way. So it's going to sort of be something like that. So in actual fact, sort of more more sort of almost like of a, a diamondy type shape but then pulling up the white really to make a bit of a point and once you've done that you can start pressing down on the side of the white piece so you've got something like that it doesn't have to be exact say so just do what you want to do with this one at the moment but what we are going to do is we're going to take this layer of the thinner blue clay and I'm going to use my blade just to cut down the right height and I'm going to go just down one side only from the bottom up to this top piece and remove the excess. So you can see all I've done is just put it on that one side. I'm now going to reduce this by pushing it in and pulling it longer until it's long enough that I can take four slices all the same. So all I'm doing is pushing in, turning it over, pushing in, turning it over and slowly, slowly we'll reduce it until it's probably about something like four inches, ten centimetres, something along those lines. And I'll use my measuring sheet just to cut four pieces. And then we're going to put them together so that the darker outline always sits down the same side. So you'll automatically get one of the messy ends on either end and that's absolutely fine and all we're going to do now is we want this back into more of a triangular shape so I'm just pushing on these out two outside pieces whilst flattening the bottom and then you can turn it so it's flat on the tile press down so you've got more of a triangular shape and then we're just going to reduce this so it's about twice the length and then we can cut this in two and put the two pieces together Now this is quite an organic looking cane, so it doesn't matter that much if you've got a lot of difference from one end to the other. It's not going to show up that much when we do our finished kaleidoscoped piece. 
as before all I'm doing is gently pushing in and that also just makes it slightly longer and just progress down each side when you've got it to about what say over two inches it's probably about two and a half isn't it so something like about seven six or seven centimeters drop down the middle and you can put it together with both the pieces without the blue on the outside because that just gives a nice bigger piece in the middle without the line down it and the last thing we're going to do if you've got a bit of um, the dark blue but we're going to cover the rest of the bit that isn't covered in the dark blue with the dark blue so as before lay your piece on the dark color cut off one end neatly and then I'll take it from somewhere about there put it right over the top halfway down the other side and that is our cane and all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to round off these pointed pieces by pushing them into the middle top and bottom then do the same down the sides and then with the flats of your fingers you can just round them off slightly And that is the sort of shape we're looking for. We've got a point down towards the white bit and the rest is a sort of a large, flat, sort of petal shape. And that is cane number one done. So I'll put him off to one side. Cane number two is going to be the blue mix. And for this one, we're very simply going to chop down the length to get three even pieces. So I'm going to put my blade up there and up there. And it also helps at times if you do the same down the side so that you've got a visual reminder of roughly where the thirds are so that when you're chopping and you're cutting down through I'm not just looking at the top but I will watch and see where my blade cuts down as I go down through the side as well because if possible you're looking to get three relatively even pieces if for any reason you haven't um, you can always put them back together and re-chop them so the two outer pieces I'm going to put together so that the dark side is together and this other one I'm going to just pinch just on either end just to create a sort of a long elongated sort of lozenge shape with points on either end and then these two bits are going to fit around the outside so the first thing I'm going to do is just roll them gently so that they stick together and then I'm going to roll them slightly this way because I want them to be slightly longer because so they've got to fit around the outside see whether it's the same height if it's not push it slightly in and hopefully by this stage you should have got it the right size so they've got the white of the inner bit going against the dark blue of the outer bits and then you just gently pull it round don't worry if it splits at this end that tends to happen and you want it to go round so it doesn't quite cover the blue on that end and then you want this to be about the same height so at the moment they're not so I'm just going to with the heel of my hand I'm just pushing this one shorter and I'll keep doing that until it is roughly the same height that's your second cane done, so you can go on one side and we'll move on to the third one. For the third one, again we're going to need um, some of the dark blue clay, so I've done exactly the same with one of these amounts of the clay. I've just put it through on setting number seven of my pasta machine again. And for this cane, all we're going to do is we're going to chop, if you can, fairly evenly down through your cane to get two halves. And each of these we are going to cover in a thin layer of the dark clay. Once your two halves are covered, turn one of them the other way up and press them together. And we're now going to reduce them in that direction till they're about twice the length 
so that we can cut them in half and put them together. So as before, all I'm doing is I'm pressing in whilst gently pulling longer along, along the length. Not trying to do it all at once, just working on a little bit and pulling it longer. Every so often I will turn it flat on the tile and wherever it's not quite even I will pull that bit down to give myself a nice even bottom edge. And just continue doing that. What happens generally is it tends to curl, that's absolutely fine. And when it's just over two inches, probably sort of about five and a half, six centimetres, drop it in half. Pick up the two edges that you can see clearly and we're going to put the pattern so it's slightly off centre, so it's not exactly opposite. And then the end bit, I'm pulling and pinching this very end really quite small. It automatically spreads out, that's fine, just push it in slightly. And then we're going to curl this bit in and over to create a curl. And then we're going to do the opposite bit from this end. So this cane would actually make quite a nice leaf cane if you just did the curl on one side and didn't do it on the other. But for this one, we're going to do the curl on either end going in the opposite directions. So this one again curls in. And that is our cane finished. But as before, we need to check it's the right height. Now for this one, it needs to go taller. So for taller, I need to spread it that way. So I'm just going to gently pull and push in at the same time to make it taller so it fits in with our other cane. So those are our three main canes for the bottom part of our design done. So now we're going to move on to the one we're going to use for the cut through. And this is the one that reminded me very much of a flame when I was doing the original kaleidoscope as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So all we're going to do with this one is we're going to pinch the ends to make it a longer, sort of thinner, diamondy type shape. So I'm just pressing in on those corners whilst at the same time pulling it down just to change the orientation. Start at the top, move to the bottom, If you've got uneven bits in the middle, just press them to they're slightly more even. So you can push and pull them in to change them however you need to, so they become more even. And you can also just gently flatten it along the middle. Now it doesn't matter that this one's gone quite tall, because I actually want it quite tall. What I'm going to do at this stage is I'm going to take the leftover of the dark blue that I've got from using the other canes and again put this through setting number seven of my pasta machine to give me a longer thin sheet. And as we've done before, we're simply going to wrap a layer of this completely around our cane. I'm just going to quickly look at the height I've got for the other canes, which is just over about an inch and a half. It's about four inches centimeters and I'm going to make this one twice that length. So as before we're just reducing it by pushing in and pulling out at the same time. I quite often find it's easier to do this by having one side flat so you can always press one side flat down on the surface if you find that easier. So we're looking to get to about three inches or about seven and a half centimeters. Once you've done that chop off one piece that's our big piece, and then repeat. And for the last piece, I've allowed it to naturally go thinner at one end so that we can effectively take two pieces. So we end up 
with five pieces in differing sizes of the same cane. What I'm going to do now is just change the shape slightly to make it more of a, a longer, thinner, sort of flamey type shape for want of a better description. So I'm just making this first one really quite long and thin. Second one, do the same as much as the size and shape allows. And obviously you want to make sure they're the same height. So he needs to go a bit higher. So the first one, I'm going to do it with the sort of orange down towards the middle. So put a bit of a, a shape, use your fingers, to sort of curve the cane around. Same with the next piece, sort of curve it round. And think, okay, so that one, let's have him so he goes something a bit like that. And your next one and just keep repeating and put them wherever you feel they look good but alternate and put some sort of some towards the top some further down towards the bottom So a fairly sort of random shape, just all going in one direction. And I know from experience, I want this to be really quite long and thin so that it cuts through the whole of our larger base cane. So all I'm doing is I'm pulling on the ends, pulling it longer, which automatically tends to make it shorter. So then I need to put it that way as well. And I'm looking for something that's probably about two and a half inches. So what would that be? Sort of about sort of six and a half, seven centimetres, something along those lines. So we now have all four of our canes and some leftover dark blue clay. So I'm just going to roll that up into a ball and make sure there's no air trapped inside and roll it into a log. Now obviously you can place yours in together in a kaleidoscope pattern however you want but I'm going to do mine very much in the way that I've done it previously just to show you how that's going to look. So I'm going to have a triangle so I want three corners so that's going to be a corner, that's going to be a corner and I'm actually going to lay this one flat on its side and pull the two end parts in which automatically forces up the back, so the back becomes a corner. So they're effectively going to sit across each other, something along those lines to make a very rough triangular shape. Now we've got bits missing, so we've got an area here that's missing, area there and area there, and that's what I will use this blue clay for. So for this one, for instance, we've got a nice flat triangular area, so I'll put my fingers like that to create a flat triangular shape press down on the clay and then we can just fit that one into there and cut away any excess for these ones they're really quite small so I'm just going to make small triangles those in. And that is our underneath cane ready. So check that you're still the same right height. So this one needs to come just a fraction taller. And then you need to decide how this one is going to cut through the other one. So what I'm going to do, I am going to curve my blade if you've got one of these flexible polymer clay blades, that's fantastic. If you haven't, then you could use a round cutter instead. Something along those lines. So use whichever you have. But I'm just going to cut through. And as I'm cutting through, so I'm watching where it goes down the sides as well to try and keep it fairly even. So I'm, I want sort of like an S curve. So the first bit's going to curve around this way. So I'm going to cut through this pink one. and go all the way down. 
but then I also want the curve to go around that way. So I'm going to cut through this one, like this, all the way around, all the way down. So straight away, put those two pieces back together so that they match. And do that both top and bottom. Turn it up so you can see roughly where it's going to go and then you can start to fit your piece in. So it'll take a little bit of manoeuvring to get it to go round and I sometimes like to have it so it just sits slightly proud of the edge so that when it curves round there and you're going to fit your pieces back in. Now it's a bit of a struggle in some ways to try and get, fit them back in so that they match. You just do the best you can and don't worry if they don't match up or marry up completely. The eye knows what it's looking for and the eye will pick up where it needs to go. So push them back round and then you can either curl that up round that way or bring it back round this way. So I think in this one I will actually curve it up round that way. Now obviously there are various ways in which you can reduce this. I'm going to do it as a triangular cane because I think that looks nice going into a hexagon which we're going to do in our heart shaped notebook. However, it, as you can see, it's almost in a square shape. So feel free if you want to reduce it as a square, you will get an equally nice pattern. But if you want to do it as a triangle, I'm going to remember that was a corner, that was a corner. Now this was a corner, but it's probably more likely to going to come out to being sort of about down here as being a corner and that is absolutely fine. So the two corners I know, I'm going to start with those and what I'm doing is I'm pressing into them whilst pressing down flat on my tile because I know that's a corner and I know that's a corner and this side is flat. And by doing that, I can now turn that flat on that side and that'll give me more of a helping hand to press up and find where the corner is on this side. So you can see we're starting to get back into a triangular shape. And then all I'm going to do is to carry on doing that, pressing in and reducing it until I have my triangular shape. And as before, I'm going to put it flat on the tile and pull the corners down and any bits that aren't quite meeting will go down just to reduce any wastage. If you have any of the acrylic blocks or the um, bits that sit on the end, your cane caps or your cane savers, and I'll put a link to those in the details below, then of course use those. They help to minimise any wastage on the end of the canes when we reduce it. But other than that, I'm just going to carry on doing this, reducing it down. And I will continue to reduce this down until it's about an inch and a half along each of these sides. So I'll keep on doing this and then I'll bring you back when I've got it down to that stage. For what we're doing today, as I said, I wanted about an inch and a half, so that's probably about four centimetres um, wide along each side, and that's good for the project we are doing. If you want to make this into something else, then obviously reduce it down to whatever size you like. And let's cut through and see what we've got. And there's our pattern showing through with that bright orange flame-like one going through the middle and all the other colours coming together. So what we need to do now is to create enough slices of these to go over our pattern to create the cover of our notebook or our sketchbook. I will take the large amount of the dark blue, put it through the pasta machine and get a nice conditioned block and I'll put that through a relatively thin setting of the pasta machine because it depends on the sizes or the slices you're going to cut of your um, cane. But I'll put that through on setting number six of my pasta machine. I'll put it out on the laminated back of my measuring sheet so that I have an area to work on. I've rolled out my sheet, I've got my card template and I've made sure that my sheet is big enough to take my template and I'm just going to 
very gently with a cocktail stick just mark out on the background sheet where the heart's going to sit you can just see that and then I'm going to use one of my little hexagon templates these are from PC UK Tools now I know that the shop's actually on a break at the moment so if you haven't already got some of these and I will put a link to where to get them but as I say I know the shop's on a break just at the moment although depending on when you watch this video they may not be um, but I'll put a link down below but if not just find download yourself a hexagon create a little um, cardboard cutout template like you do with a heart and I'm going to place that in the middle of my heart and again with the cocktail stick just on the corners mark where the corners meet and when you're doing hexagons and putting your slices of clay veneer together this helps tremendously to do this lift it off and with a blunt something like this, this is an actual old ruler where all the lines have come off mark the lines across the corners of your hexagon because this gives you the placement of your slices and means you're going to end up with a nice even placement of slices and your hexagon pattern will be nice and regular in the finished piece okay so we have got our heart we have got our hexagon and we have got our lines drawn so now we know when we put our slices down they're going to be nice and even I like to take my slices on my measuring sheet because it means when I'm cutting down with my blade I can see along these lines to make sure that I've got even slices from the top to the bottom. Cutting triangles is the easiest because you can actually see the blade all the way down and you can see both sides of the cane as you're cutting. I have a tendency when I'm cutting to put my head right over the top which is why I will do most of my cutting off camera because if I put my head over you won't see anything apart from the top of my head. Um, but I find that easy to do. My other tip is I have more than one blade and I keep a blade purely for taking slices and I mark this one with my little notches of paper on the end here so I know which one is my extremely sharp blade because the sharper the blade the more even the slices you will get and on that I know there are some fantastic slicing machines around if you've got one of those absolutely use that but other than that we're going to take 24 even if you can slices so I'm going to have to shift over a bit so I can take this one As you can see there, this is why I do it over the top, because that's not that even. But sort of something along that sort of size thickness, if you can. Um, if you want to go bigger, go bigger. But be aware for what we're doing. For the notebook, you need to sort of have those spirals in. So the thicker your top and bottom cover, the less pages or the bigger the um, jump rings you're going to have in order to get through everything. OK, so off screen now, I will take 24 slices of our cane about that thickness and bring you back when I've got that done. So there are my slices all cut. So I've got my sheet ready to put them on. The other tool I use is a very old blade which went blunt. Now of course you can sharpen these but I decided not to so I have just masked this one with masking tape and I use this as a tool just to um, neaten up my slices when I put them together. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. So the first thing to do is to take three slices and decide how you're going to put your pattern together. So I think I'm going to put them together with the blue in the middle for this one. So I'm going to put them up so that they touch and I'm watching where all the parts join as we go. And then that piece will go up like that. If you find doing three pieces difficult, then just do two. But because we've got our lines now marked, I can see where they need to go. And I can use this just to position them down slightly and get them all where they should be. I will take the next three slices. So this one needs to start that way. So the next one will go there. And the next one there. And now I know that they're going to go under there. And 
again I can use my blade that's masked just to position them slightly and then the next three we'll start there with one going that way One going that way and they'll sit there and then I'll just work my way around the rest of the pattern. So I'll speed up going through that till I've got them all in place but you can see what we're doing as we go. Okay, so there I've got all my pieces mainly in position. What I'm going to do now is just slightly off camera, just jiggle some of them by putting my um, craft knife underneath and using this to get them more in place. And then once we've done that, all we do is with the end of our cable needle, not the point, just the side, we're going to roll down each of the lines just so we get them nicely adhered to each other and get a nice smooth finish to our veneer. So I'm also going to check at this point that the template is fitting on and that it's going to get a nice pattern coverage and then as I said with the end of the cable needle just roll down in between each of the joins just to make sure that the slices are nicely adhered together. With a nice clean roller Roll over your finished piece, make sure it's lovely and smooth, and we are ready to cut down and take away our heart. The other thing I'll do at this stage is simply to remove the excess of the blue clay because we will need that for the underneath part of our heart notebook as well. I have placed a piece of cling film or the plastic wrap over the top of my veneer so that when we cut down through we can get that nice beveled edge that you normally get in association with the cutters. Now if like me you don't have a cutter the size of your template I will show you how you can get that beveled edge just using the craft knife and your template. So the first thing I'm going to do is to decide where I want to cut through. So as I showed at the beginning I've got this piece of paper with my heart shape cut out so I can have a look through and place it down and see what pattern I want. So there I'd have the, the pinks showing through. If I do it that way, I've got the greens showing through mainly. Just, just have a bit of a think, have a look around, see what you want to do. So I think I do like it with the pinks. So I'm going to place it down and have a look to see whether I'm relatively even. So I've got the two bits showing there the bottom here and I've got this straight line going down where the straight line goes so I now know I can place my template in that position pull that away and just have a look at the template again look at the bits showing proud see whether I'm about as even as I can get and when I am with the blunt side of my craft knife I'm not pressing through so I'm not cutting through I'm just going to start marking out around the edge of my template, just pressing very gently down. So I'm forcing that plastic wrap down around the edge of the template. You don't need to rush this, you can go as slow as you need to slow go, but I'm keeping the cardboard template in place all the time. And just going round. When you're coming to the point, it's easier to come away from it and go around. And having done it once, I'm going to repeat the same again, this time pressing down slightly harder. And now this time, the third time, you should be able to, with your craft knife, actually cut around in the groove that you've made.
and hopefully you should have cut down through your piece and you've got a beveled edge where the pattern's pulled down over the dark clay underneath. Remove your clay from whatever you've been working on. I've been working on this sheet. Place it flat on a towel to bake. Try to make sure you've got no air trapped underneath. And to keep it nice and flat during baking, take a second tile and place it upside down on top. If you want to, you can protect the whole thing even more by covering the whole thing in some aluminium foil. But either way, bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. And that's the top of our notebook done. So I've got my background colour through on setting three, which is a medium setting of my pasta machine. I've put my template on and drawn around it again with a cocktail stick so I can see my heart shape. I've taken six slices of the cane and put them through my thinnest setting of the pasta machine. And I've got myself a little heart shaped cutter and I'm going to simply cut out various shapes from these and lay them in a random pattern to create a pattern on the back of my notebook. Now, Obviously you can do whatever you like on the back of yours. You can do another pattern exactly the same as you had on the front or something like this, whatever you choose to do. And then with a nice clean roller, simply roll them into the background. As before, add the cling film or plastic wrap and with the blunt side of your craft knife, start to press down until you get to the point where you can cut to create that beveled edge. And there you have your background pattern for your notebook as well. Exactly the same. Take it off this, place on tile flat with no air trapped underneath, second tile on top, and again, bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. The next thing to decide is what sort of paper you're going to put in the middle. I've got some sketchbook paper here, and I'm going to be cutting out four sheets at once because it's relatively thin sketchbook paper. And with my template, I've got some nice big 10 by 10 inch or 25 by 25 centimeter sheets. And I know I can get five of these designs on and then I'll cut them out four sheets at a time to give myself 20 sheets. If you're going to be using watercolour paper probably 10 sheets would be enough for something like this. Same with the pastel paper. You could even make yourself a little oil paper notebook or sketch pad and if you don't have any of those then just use plain A4 paper and make yourself a little notebook. Here are my sheets, all nicely cut out, all the same, so say I've got 20 there. And for the hinges, we're going to put the hinges down one sort of side of the heart. So I'm going to use centimetres just because it's easier, because I don't want to have a huge amount. Could of course do about sort of two inches instead if you wanted, but say I'm going to use four centimetres and you want it enough in that you're not going to sort of create the holes and it's going to tear the paper. So probably about half a centimetre in, about a quarter of an inch, something like that. And I'm going to do one, two, three. I've got a nice thick pointed needle and I'm just going to press down to create holes where I've put those dots. I can lift up a couple of sheets and press down. and keep going through the pack until I get to the bottom. You can start picking them up a few at a time and make yourself the bigger holes. Put to one side and repeat down the rest of the stack. 
When you finish putting the holes in, take one piece to one side and leave that as a template for putting the holes into our pieces that are baking. And then with the jump rings, carefully open them up by twisting them that way open and one by one start adding them on to the pages of your notebook. And when they're all ready, just put them to one side and we'll wait to finish off the front and back covers. So I've got both the front and the back of the notepad and all I've done is I've added some varnish onto them just to give them a little bit of a, a shine. And now we're going to put some card onto the inside. This just helps protect the clay a little bit and if the um, book gets bent or something then the, the card just helps to protect the clay and make sure it doesn't break. And I've cut the card so it's just slightly smaller all the way around than the underneath. I've done that with both of them and then I'm going to add some PVA glue to the backs and press the card in place and let it dry. Okay, last little bit. So we've got our card stuck into place done that on both the front and the back of the notepad. We've got our single sheet of paper ready to use as template to put the holes in. So you need to make sure you put it in the right way around for the holes to be down on that side. Put it where you want the paper to be. And then with your pencil, just mark so you can see where you're going to be drilling the holes. If you've got something like the piece of wood to use it, use that. And I'm starting with my one millimeter drill bit. all the way through. I then do the same for all three holes, then work up to the two millimetre bit. And finally the three millimetre bit. holes on the card side get a bit messy so just with your cable needle you can just press the paper down and press it in through the hole. So I'll repeat for the other two holes on there and then with that being the back side this time the paper holes paper will go that way down and I'll put the holes down there and I'll bring you back when I've got all six holes done. And now we've got holes in all of our pieces, it's just a case of putting them all together. So start by putting the last piece of paper in the back and then the front. And then with our pliers, we'll simply push these round jump rings back together and our piece will be finished. The trick with the last one is to manoeuvre them all in place and then try and twist the rings round so that they move round whilst they're in place. Once they're all in, simply use your pliers to manoeuvre the jump rings back as they were. And your notebook or scrapbook is finished. And here's another colour option. So for this one, where I did the blues, I did this as purple mix, which was white, lilac, and purple. Where the reds were on here I used lemon yellow, sunflower yellow and Indian red. For this one I did the blues instead and this was brilliant blue, peppermint and white. And lastly on this one where I used the purples I used a greens and that was emerald green, a sort of a, a very pale tropical green mixed with a little bit of white down into white. 
as I mentioned, this one I had varnished. This one I sanded and polished, which gives a much higher shine, but there's a lot more work involved in that. And on this one, I did black on the back with a large heart shape. And I've just got a little bit of a, a diamante added in there as well. I just drilled a hole and did it both at the front and at the back. And that's it. That's the end of today's project, where we use the number 64 cane to create some little notepads or sketchbooks. I hope you enjoyed that one. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, a special thank you to those of you who subscribe. I really do appreciate it. I hope you have great fun making some of these of your own, either for yourselves or for other people. And I love to see pictures, so don't forget to tag me if you post anything showing what you've done. The number 64 cane can be used for lots of other things as well, not just notebooks. So hopefully you'll find other uses for it as well. As always, have fun with your polymer clay and hopefully I'll see you next time. That's it for now. Bye.